Hi, welcome to a new vlog. Welcome to a new week. Uh, it's Monday. It is a glorious sunny day. I cannot believe it. It's finally above negative, the negative degrees, but I just got a package so I thought we would start off the week with a little unboxing because I got a Sephora package. I literally ordered this on Saturday and it's here and it's Monday, so that's cool. But I've been meaning to update you on this for so long, which is the reason I placed this order, but um, I just forgot and now this whole bottle is empty because I've used it. Um, I think I was saying how I was searching for like a good face wash. I hadn't really found one ever in my life that I'm like, oh, I really love that. I really feel like it makes a difference. But this one, guys, oh my gosh, this is the best face wash that I've ever used in my life. I'm having a little bit of breakout right now because I'm on my period, but this has like literally made such a difference for me recently. Um, and the whole bottle is now gone. I think I have like one wash, one wash left maybe. But this is the Youth to the People Kale and Green Tea Spinach Vitamins Superfood Cleanser. My skin has literally never felt that clean after I wash it and like it just it has made such a difference for my skin so yeah this is the one uh that I ordered a few months ago I was honestly hoping that I wasn't gonna like it because used to the people is a bit of a more expensive choice and so I got like their smallest size of it so I could try it but um I had to buy it again so um I did <laughs> this time I got the big version like the standard version so this is what it looks like I'm really really happy Ooh, she's big. She's huge. I like these are glass bottles. Um, Kelsifer's favorite thing to do when he's upset, i.e. when he's not getting enough attention, he always targets this. Like, I don't know how he knows, but he only ever like knocks this bottle over when I'm ignoring him for a few minutes and he wants to play or something. Like he literally goes into the bathroom and knocks this one over. He knows I'll come running and be like, <laughs> please don't hurt my face wash. Not sponsored, but I, God damn wish it was. Because I was placing a Sephora order anyway, I did pick up a couple new things to try. I try to only do this when I am ordering replacements or something, but I've been wanting to try a scalp oil for a little bit. My hair's been feeling a lot nicer. My hair has been feeling a lot nicer recently, but I wanted to try this one because I saw it had so many good reviews. So this is the JVN uh, pre-wash scalp oil. It looks like this. I heard it's supposed to help with like build up. Massage into scalp and disperse through ends for 15 minutes before washing for shinier, healthier looking strands. Yeah. So I just, I did just wash my hair last night, but I'll probably try this the next time I wash it. I'm very excited about this. So that is the other thing that I got. And then I also ordered a new shampoo because this one is supposed to be like a detox shampoo from Way. Way is also kind of pricey. So I just bought the little mini mini size this one is with apple cider vinegar and will deeply cleanse away dirt oil and impurities so i just kind of wanted to give this one a shot maybe use this every once in a while because it's more of a you know detox shampoo for for all hair types so that's the other thing i got and then finally the two samples that they sent me we have some vitamin c serum and some lactic acid exfoliating serum whatever the hell that is there's my little Sephora haul. This morning has been a huge admin morning. I've done a whole bunch of emails, scheduled some appointments, and I have a really busy week ahead actually. So I think what I wanna do now, because today is my least busy, least busy day, um, I'd love to pick a new book to read. I finished from Lukov with Love over the weekend. Yes, did I finish this yesterday? I think I finished this on Saturday. I ended up giving it three stars. Um, I really ended up liking the slow burn, but then I'm kind of thinking that maybe Mariana's Pata does slow burn because she can't do smut because like there's only really one spicy scene in this book because like that's Mariana's Pata's style and lord it was so bad. I was snorting. She was using words I don't ever want to see associated with that kind of anatomy and it was it was painful painful to get through and i wish i could have just skipped it like i wish the book would have just ended 
once they had like their first kiss or something. She did like, it was, it was that bad. It was that bad. I'll talk more about this in my wrap up because I had a few other specific complaints, but to say other good things, I did enjoy some of the character development. Not that I think it was like super, super well done, but it was like nice to see. And I did end up kind of liking Jasmine and Ivan together, although the juvenile insults never stopped. So anyway, I'm done with this. So now I can pick something else, but I kind of want something fun. I kind of want something fun again, because I'm also going to be picking up either this week or next week um once there was a war by steinbeck for the book club and that's a classic another heavy war classic and i just kind of want something happy and fun and easy right now that's the kind of mood i'm in so let's pick something okay i made a cup of coffee let's pick a book okay i think i'm not feeling classics but i am gonna pull out um once there was a war so here it is oh i'm like matching with it today um it is 230 233 pages long um this one i think is more non-fiction but i'm also gonna pick a bookmark and then i might just like start it very slowly probably not right now although maybe i am in the mood for this you know what? i don't know let me grab a bookmark <laughs> i got carolyn to leave her business card I got Carolyn to leave her business card here when she was here, so I'm gonna use this as a bookmark because it's just cute and it's for our book club. So I'm gonna put this on my desk and then if I'm kind of feeling like I wanna pick this up, I will, but let's pick like a more fun, more bit of a fun, lighthearted one. Okay, I am kind of feeling like I want to read new poems by Rilke. I don't know, like this looks deceptively long, but the poems are very short and half of them are German or in German. I also haven't read as many of my winter books as I would have liked to this year yet. Um, I have Ember and the Ice Dragons by Heather Fawcett. This is a middle grade. I feel like this would be nice. This is kind of more of what I'm in the mood for. We'll see. But then I could also do like a Murakami. That's the problem though. I don't have a lot of like fun, light, easy, nice books. I feel like I need to buy or just read more of those. <laughs> because I have, I think I have four different versions, four different translations of Rilke's new poems. I might um, get them all out and then read a few from each of them of the same poems to get a feel of like which one which translation I prefer, which one I like better. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> this just fell out. This is from Michael, who gave me this one. I might just start this one too, because it looks so cute. Oh, hey. <laughs> Excuse me. Hey, what are you doing? Okay, I guess, Kelsifer, uh, you want to give them the poetry recommendations or what? Okay. Oh, <gasps> stop, that's my coffee. Good morning. So I'm actually heading out in a few minutes because I have an appointment today for my first ever massage. I'm really excited, a little nervous. I think I'm gonna like it, but I've never had a massage before. So we're gonna see how this goes. But I just thought it'd be a cool thing to try while I'm here. So I'm gonna go get a massage and then I'm gonna come back. And I have quite a busy day ahead of me because I have another appointment this afternoon as well. But there's a lot of YouTube stuff I wanna get done beforehand. I'm also gonna be calling Carolyn this afternoon, which is gonna be amazing. And yes, but first let's go relax a little bit. Oops, I'm back from my appointment. <laughs> It was a hair appointment and my hair is gone. So obviously I got quite a big chop. I'm very happy about it. Um, this has been something I've been wanting to do for so long. My long hair was 
pissing me off. That was my other appointment yesterday, so that is where I went, got that done. And my massage was also pretty good. It was definitely a bit more painful than I was expecting, but like I feel a lot better now, like after the massage, you know, after now that it's over. So anyway, that is my little update for right now. I actually can't chat for too long, even though I have so much to update you on reading wise, because I started a new book. We have this man, He's in a very playful mood, as usual, honestly. I'm about to head out to a yoga class. I actually haven't been to a class at the gym for a little bit, um, although this week was kind of my week back. I did Zumba for the first time earlier this week, which was really fun. Um, but yeah, I didn't go for a while because I tore my bicep. I tore my bicep lifting weights, so... <laughs> anyway. Pretty much all fine now, we're all good. It, it took a little bit to heal, but I'm gonna go to yoga and then I'm gonna come back because I did end up starting Ember and the Ice Dragons by Heather Fawcett, which I have been absolutely loving. I'm obsessed with this is basically the update I can give you right now, but I'm gonna go get ready to go. I don't know how I'm supposed to like really do my hair cause like I can't really tie it back. So I just clipped um, the longer pieces back with bobby pins. The mirror's also so dusty, good lord. These are the leggings that I got from Lululemon on their, I think it was their Boxing Day or Black Friday sale. These are the, just a line, but I really like this color. And then this top is from Halara. I'm finally back inside for the night, but I so wanted to give you an update on Ember and the Ice Dragons because I am obsessed with this. Why is this so good? Like, why is it so good? And I went on Goodreads and it has, I think, under a thousand ratings. So please read this if you are looking for like a nice, whimsical, magical, feel good kind of book. Um, I will say it, it's honestly sometimes a bit hard to read because it does deal obviously with dragons and people hunting dragons because the plot of this book, the synopsis, is that we have this man named Lionel, and he is a storm mancer because in this world, people can work magic through storms, through magical storms, like that's the only way that they can have any sort of magical powers. So one day he's out in Wales chasing a storm. He's a storm chaser and he comes across this baby dragon and her parents have been killed um, by poachers because dragon scale and also like the heart scale of the dragon is very valuable, but Lionel can't bring himself to kill the baby dragon. And so he decides to put a spell on her that will transform her form into a human girl. And he names her Ember and he takes her in as like his adopted daughter. And they grow up together where he lives on a university campus in England because he's also, is he a professor? If you like his Dark Materials series by Philip Pullman, a lot of the same vibes there because Ember grows up as like a human girl, um, pretty much except like the spell messed up and so she still has her wings. So there is like an invisibility cast over her wings, but she can still fly as a human girl, which is fun. And like, she can speak English. So magical. I love Heather Fawcett's writing. She's so good at adding in like little unique splashes to her world that are just, they're just so magical, like just little different things. But um, this book really begins because Ember has the unfortunate habit of bursting into flames. Like she can't really help it. Um, she'll just spontaneously combust because she's a dragon whenever like she kind of walks into the sunlight or when it's the summer. And so to stop herself from injuring or killing someone, namely like her father or her cat or anyone, she's like, I need to ship myself off somewhere really cold, really dark where I'm not gonna burst into flames all the time. So luckily her aunt works at a research station in Antarctica, which is so fun. And so she goes, she travels all the way to Antarctica. I love, I freaking love this book so, so much. Like it's so good. Um, anyway, so she's in Antarctica, she's there. She's meeting like penguins, different researchers, but there's also poachers there because ice dragons live on the south pole uh, so they're there to hunt the dragons and it's just it's so good it's so heartwarming it's so fun and i'm just really like i'm so glad so glad i picked this up i'm really thinking even about giving it five stars um i think the writing is glorious i'm loving the way that heather fawcett is describing things especially describing the snow in antarctica and dragons and it's just it's so fun i don't think i've ever read a book set in antarctica either so yeah um i heard of this because jade from jd ray reads mentioned it uh, a while ago and then i picked it up off of thrift books i think like last 
spring or something but um i'm so happy so and like look how cute oh my god gorgeous morning it is very chilly in here this room always gets so chilly because of the big window but um i do have some reading updates um oh my gosh okay so this morning i finished dreams lie beneath by rebecca ross um i did end up giving it four stars honestly i think i forgot to say but like especially in the middle parts it was really reminding me of hell's moving castle in some aspects so i was really liking that but yeah definitely a lot of things that were reminding me of howl's moving camp uh castle i really enjoyed the different like identity themes and switching identity and like identity transformation reversal trickery all of that um and we do follow clementine who um through a spell she gets someone to i guess cast for her transforms herself into this different girl entirely called anna so that she can try and get back at the two brothers who have taken her home away from herself and her father so yeah i just like kind of i just kind of liked all aspects of this i think it's even more impressive that it's a standalone because i feel like you don't get a lot of standalone fantasy especially young adults not something that's been coming out recently are like fantasy standalones which i really appreciate especially if like you can fit all of the like lore backstory history that rebecca ross crammed into this one that was really cool i do wish that the romance the romance plot the relationship there between clementine and one of the brothers i wish that was like a bit more focused on honestly and i do wish the ending had been um, kind of squeezed out, squeezed a few parts out. I wish the ending had been longer at the back half, if that makes sense, and shorter at the, the front half once we reach like the final act of the book. I think some of that could have been changed, but yeah. Overall, I really, really enjoyed this. I gave this four stars. Um, I'll probably check out anything else that Rebecca Ross has written. Now, I think she actually has an adult fantasy out, if I'm not mistaken, so yeah. But this morning, I was also reading a lot more of Ember and the Ice Dragons. I cannot seem to put this down. I was also reading this last night, so I am 214 pages through. Guys, guys, I highly recommend. It is kind of very upsetting, I think especially for a children's book because it is about hunters going after dragons. Um, even though dragons are like sentient, they can reason. Obviously, we our main character is a dragon disguised as a girl and um, she's every bit as human as the rest of our characters. But like I said, she is making friends with two kids at the research station. Um, I freaking love the penguins. I love the cute little splashes of magic. It just, it just really reminds me of like, I don't know everything i love about fantasy world but especially because like this one is set in victorian the victorian period um and it's kind of set in an alternate world where it's a bit steampunky but also the british empire has control of antarctica which um its reach never extended that far i mean obviously it's part of the treaty now but in um, ember and the ice dragons they have like a whole castle in antarctica they have a prince who resides over the region and the south pole and it's just really really fascinating really fun and like i said like the polar element of it love 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 especially because it is summer in no which means it's winter in antarctica so um there's no daylight on chapter 14 i'm i think halfway through and i can ah i just can't put it down i love it but like i said it is making me really upset because i really don't like reading about animal abuse or like people killing animals or dragons for that matter in any book so that's been kind of hard but um i'll probably end up finishing this i'd like to say this weekend um i wish i had some accompanying snow outside because it's just been raining the past few days and that's been making me feel really tired so yes um i'm still reading the hotel i feel like i haven't talked about this in a while i just haven't picked it back up but i'm going to be picking this back up today probably in a few minutes this afternoon because i have a few tasks to switch back and forth between so i'm gonna try to make i'm gonna try to make some more progress on this take some more notes annotate a little bit because um i do have some 
I guess exciting yeah I would say exciting news to tell you about I guess something related so I don't know if we'll do this do that in this vlog just in just to make sure everything gets cemented first before I say anything but um the audiobook I did start is A Mercy by Toni Morrison I, do, I think I'm gonna go through with this because I'm already I'm only 15 pages through but this one's really short I got this thrifted a little bit ago but Toni Morrison's audiobooks are great because they are narrated by her, but I do find Toni Morrison a bit of a challenging author because her way of writing, um, I think it requires a lot of work. I think she's brilliant, and so I really have to really be paying attention. It's not an audiobook where I really feel like I can, you know, do other things while listening to it, like a middle grade or anything like that, or the fantasy. So this one is set in, I think, the early 1600s, no, late 1600s, when the slave trade was still in its infancy. In the Americas, religious and class, and class divisions, prejudice and oppression were rife, providing the fertile soil in which slavery and race hatred were planted and took root. So we follow a variety of characters in here. Right now we are from the perspective of Jacob, who's an Anglo-Dutch trader and, and adventurer with a small holding in the harsh north. Um, he doesn't really agree at all with slavery or anything like that, but he takes a slave girl in part uh, payment for a bad debt from a plantation owner in Maryland. So um, the daughter's mother is like, I'm going to send you off with Jacob because I want you to have like a better life. Um, and she thinks, you know, she's going to have a better life away from the plantation. So really do not know anything about this book. Like I said, I'm only 15 pages through, so I will keep you updated on that one. But I think for right now, I might. Do I want to make more coffee? I also need to start once there was a war. I don't know. I'm also needing to take some headshots today for something, so I'll probably do that probably once the workday is kind of over and then I'll probably go outside to do that. Hopefully, hopefully the lighting stays around. There's like no sun as well. So yeah, but that is everything I'm reading and then I might start once there was a war. And I'd like to do some more research on Hemingway. So um, like I said, I'll probably switch back and forth between Hemingway research, reading the hotel, researching on that, and then maybe reading a bit of Steinbeck as well. So, um, and then I have all these books from the library still about hotels that I have to read, and then I have a separate pile out there that I want to return, which I might actually, oh, I could do that today. That's a pretty good idea. Do the headshots outside, return my library books. Is there anything else I need to do? I don't, I don't think so. And then tomorrow, tomorrow I want to go thrifting for books. Okay, good morning. So today's a very exciting day. I'm gonna be going thrifting for a bunch of books. Hopefully just thrifting because I know there's at least two thrift stores I'm gonna hit up. One is the really, really lovely one that I went to with Carolyn in the summer. It's called Sellers here in Toronto, Sellers and Newell uh, used books. Love that place. I cannot wait to show you guys what it looks like again because they were doing a lot of like moving around, rearranging, renovation when we were there last time. But I have a huge, huge list of books on my phone 
to get um, for some different purposes, but yeah, some of them I'm confident I'll find because they are classics and thrift stores usually have a bunch of classics and other ones I'm fairly certain, like, it'll be a miracle if I find them because they're very specific, um, probably not a lot of copies being donated to thrift stores, so I might have to hit up a regular old bookstore or just order them from like Book Depository or something, but that is the plan, so I'm gonna head out in a little bit, I just got my I just got my book shopping outfit on, which is a little bit extra today, but um, I'm just feeling just feeling very bookish today, which is a nice feeling. So, It is the next day and I am back from my book thrifting journey. Um, I ended up going to three bookstores actually, but I only found two of the books on my list that I was looking for and then the other two that I bought were just books that I wanted to buy, which I wasn't really supposed to do, but it's fine because one of them is a book I've already read and I just wanted to have it in my collection. So um, I did end up, like I said, getting two of the books that I needed, but yeah, the other ones were really hard to find. I wasn't really expecting to find them because they're just, you know, not super popular, abundant titles. But anyway, the first one I went to was Sellers, which is my favorite, um, definitely my favorite bookstore I've been to in Toronto. I just love it. I love it so 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 much. Highly recommend going. You guys recommended that one to me actually. It's in Little Italy. It is fantastic. So um, at Sellers I actually bought three of these. <laughs> anyway, the first one that I needed um, is Death in Venice by Thomas Mann. I've never read Thomas Mann. I actually hadn't ever really heard of him. The most recent thing actually is that he's come up on my like I asked uh, people their worst book and then everyone was like why isn't Thomas Mann on there? I hate Thomas Mann so much. I didn't know he generated this much Hate I guess I don't know. I don't know anything about him, but death in Venice is about this man Who goes on a vacation in Venice? He's a successful but aging writer who follows his wanderlust in search of spiritual fulfillment that instead leads to his erotic doom. The author calls it a story of the voluptuousness of doom. So anyway, he's in Venice and apparently there's like an epidemic in the city at the same time, but he becomes obsessed with I think this young boy or something. Um, that's all I know about it. What I do know about it is that of course because he's on vacation, there's also a hotel. So I don't know what to expect of Thomas Mann. I've had a lot 
of the hotel books that's actually where i heard about death in venice specifically a lot of the hotel books that i was reading mentioned him um especially hotel occupied space and the hotel lobby book i was reading they both talked about death in venice so it was kind of on my list of things that i um was looking out for but no absolutely nothing about thomas Mann. but i am excited to get to death in venice okay the other one i got from sellers um because i have read this it's one of i feel like my favorite books um and i just i saw it and i was like you know i've been meaning to add that to my collection for a while is one of your orphans by kazuo shiguro i talk about this book i've been talking about it Okay, you know what I was saying at the start of the video, how Kelsifer knocks over my glass skincare? He's at it again. Anyway, when I saw this at Sellers, I was like, you know what, I should just get it. I've been meaning to just add this lovingly to my bookshelves because I've been talking about it so much recently and I just want a physical copy. I want to reread this. Um, I don't know if this is my favorite cover of it. I know there's a bunch of covers, especially the new ones that just came out of all Ishiguro's titles that are gorgeous. Uh, I'm not gonna do it, I'm not gonna do it. But this book also starts on my birthday, which is funny. Not obviously 1930, but the 24th of July. But that is When We Were Orphans, I highly recommend. It is a detective novel. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay, and then the last book that I got at Sellers, I don't know why I did this because then I had to haul it around with me all day. It's quite a big boy. It's quite a big boy. And it is um, Being and Nothingness by Jean-Paul, our friend Jean-Paul Sartre. I have read some of this actually. I used a huge section of this. Um, this is a piece of philosophy and I guess theory. I talk a lot sometimes about Sartre in English class, um, but I read Being, the section called Being for the Other and the Other's Existence. That was the section that I went through a lot when I was doing my Frankenstein essay last year. Um, I really used a lot of that philosophy in my essay, so like I just want to have this whole thing. Um, I think especially for an English student, it's very useful. So I just picked it up. It was only eighteen dollars, and like this is a gorgeous copy. It's like brand new. So um, yeah, and it's it's huge, and I'm just so happy that I have it in paperback. Yeah, the whole thing is like I exist. For myself as known by the other with the appearance of the other's look i have the revelation of my object being I talked a lot about like witnessing with this um and how like you're seeing you're always seeing yourself if you're in the presence of someone else through like the other's eyes so like you turn yourself into an object because you're realizing that they are subject and through their subjectivity you become object so anyway super cool but um yeah I'm, i want to read all of this at some point so added this to the collection don't know where it's gonna fit on my bookshelves at all and then i went to bmv a different bmv in because i went to the bmv by the eaton center last time i really like this one but the one i went to this time was much bigger um and i only got one book there it's the last one they had so this one is also used which is nice because this was only five dollars and that is hotel world by ali smith a huge huge thank you to the lovely wonderful lady who commented on my goodreads that i should read hotel world um i think you just left a comment underneath like my weird hotel readings and you were like hey you should check out hotel world and i have and it's now one of the books i need 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 for something um so Thank you so much because I didn't know this existed, but anyway, I found it. I was so happy to find it. And this sounds like something I'm just gonna be so obsessed with because this follows like the death of this chambermaid who falls down a dumb waiter chute at a hotel, like she dies. And then we follow how many people? Five. Four of them are alive, three of them are strangers, two of them are sisters, and one of them is dead. I think this is gonna be so cool. This was shortlisted for the Booker Prize in 2001. Um, and then the book is also split into different tenses. So we have past, we have like future conditional. I would really like to start this super soon, but that is the last book I got because then I went to Seekers bookstore, which is like pretty close to BMV. You guys also recommended I go to Seekers, um, but they didn't, they didn't have any of the books on my list. But yeah, Sellers is Sellers and Newell is my my favorite. I highly recommend going to that one. But that is my book haul that i got oh and i also got a book for carolyn but i'm not going to show it in this video just in case she watches it so um i got five books and one of them will be a secret for now so anyway that is my little book haul i'm going to close the vlog off here i'm about to finish ember and the ice dragons actually i have like i think 30 pages left no 50 pages left 
um, still so good. I'm like really thinking about giving this five stars because I've just been enjoying myself enormously. So anyway, um, I want to say thank you so much for watching. Thank you for coming along with me on this week. Kelsifer says goodbye as well and I'll see you in my next video. So ciao.